Enjoy a narrated virtual tour through the U.S. World War II aircraft section of the Smithsonian's Air and Space Museum's Udvar Hazy Center. This tour features military aircraft that were used by the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Army Air Force during the Second World War. The museum is in Chantilly, Virginia, outside of Washington, D.C., is free to visit but there is a $15 parking fee. Stearman's E-75 cadets, along with Fairchilds and Ryans, served as the backbone of U.S. Army and Navy primary flight training during World War II. They served the Army as the PT-13D and the Navy as the N-2S-5. This cadet was used to train naval aviation cadets until 1946. The Naval Aircraft Factory's N-3N was used as a primary trainer from 1938 until the end of World War II. They operated in both wheeled and float configurations, introducing hundreds of students to naval aviation. Its Yellow Peril nickname came from the aircraft's propensity for ground looping on landing and because of its color scheme. Retired in 1961, N3N seaplanes became the last biplanes that served the U.S. military. The Ryan PT-22 recruit was the main military version of the commercial Ryan SD. It was the first low-wing monoplane used for primary pilot training and made for a smoother transition to more demanding low-wing fighters during World War II. It was heavily used throughout the war years with both military and civilian schools but was retired from the Army Air Force with the end of the war. First built in 1937, the Piper J-3 Cub earned its fame as a trainer. 75% of all pilots in the civilian pilot training program were trained on Cubs, many going on to more advanced training in the military. Cubs were also flown during World War II as observation, liaison, and ambulance airplanes. Known variously as the L-4, O-59, and NE-1, they rendered valuable service and were nicknamed grasshoppers. The Stinson L-5 Sentinel was the military version of the commercial Stinson 105 Voyager. It was the second most widely used liaison aircraft and it remained in service in Asia and the Pacific as late as 1955. Vought Sikorsky Aircraft Division's OS-2U Kingfisher was the U.S. Navy's primary ship-based scout and observation airplane during World War II. Most Kingfishers operated in the Pacific where they rescued many downed airmen including World War I ace Eddie Rickenbacker and the crew of his B-17 Flying Fortress. Lt. J.G. Roland M. Batten Jr. was awarded the Navy Cross for making a daring rescue in this airplane on July 4, 1944. The P-38 Lightning was one of the most successful twin-engine fighters ever flown by any nation. From 1942 to 1945, U.S. Army Air Force pilots flew P-38s over Europe, the Mediterranean, and the Pacific, and from the frozen Aleutian Islands to the sun-baked deserts of North Africa. Its first large-scale service was during the North African Campaign in November 1942, where the German pilots named it the Forked Tail Devil. When it began combat operations from England, it was the only fighter with the range to escort bombers into Germany. Seven of the top eight Pacific theater aces were lightning pilots with lightnings downing more Japanese aircraft than any other Army Air Force's warplane. The Curtis P-40 Kitty Hawk proved to be a successful versatile fighter during the first half of World War II. The shark-mouthed tomahawks that General Claire Chenault's Flying Tigers flew in China against the Japanese remain among the most popular airplanes of the war. The Kitty Hawk, sometime known as a warhawk, was used by most Allied powers during World War II, and remained in frontline service until the end of the war. This B 26 B Marauder, flak bait, survived 206 operational missions over Europe, more than any other American aircraft during World War II. Few Marauders survive today, with one preserved at the Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio. Marauders quickly received the reputation of a widowmaker due to the early model's high accident rate during takeoffs and landings. It became a safer aircraft once crews were retrained and after aerodynamic modifications, resulting in Marauders having the lowest loss rate of any U.S. Army Air Force bomber by the end of World War II. During World War II, 
U.S. Navy bombing squadrons flew Curtis SB-2 Sea Helldiver dive bombers against Japan from November 1943 to the war's end in September 1945. About 30 Navy squadrons operated Helldivers aboard 13 carriers. The Helldiver was the last dive bomber operated by the Navy and the last significant combat aircraft produced by Curtis Wright. Marines on Guadalcanal took their VOD F-4U Corsairs into combat and engaged the enemy for the first time on February 14, 1943. Corsairs had an immediate impact on the Pacific Air War. Pilots used its speed and firepower to engage the more maneuverable Japanese airplanes only when the advantage favored the Americans. As of VJ Day the Navy credited Corsair pilots with destroying 2,140 enemy aircraft in aerial combat while the Navy and Marines lost 189 Corsairs in combat and 1,435 in non-combat accidents. During the Korean War, its primary mission was in support of Allied ground units along the battlefront. The Republic P-47 Thunderbolt was the largest single-engine fighter airplane flown by any nation during World War II. It was armed with the heaviest armament of any fighter yet built, 850 caliber machine guns. A turbo supercharger system that fit inside the aft fuselage of the big fighter made the airplane very fast at high altitude, approximately 400 miles per hour at 25,000 feet. It could outdive all opposing fighters, a definite advantage in aerial combat, and could absorb tremendous battle damage and continue to fly. Thunderbolts were lost at the exceptionally low rate of 0.7% per mission and jug pilots achieved an aerial kill ratio of 4.6 to 1. In the European theater, P-47 pilots destroyed more than 7,000 enemy aircraft, more than half of them in air-to-air -air combat and it was probably the best ground attack aircraft fielded by the United States. The Grumman F-6F Hellcat was originally conceived as an advanced version of the U.S. Navy's then-current frontline fighter, the F-4F Wildcat. Delays with Corsair production led the Navy to ask Grumman for an improved version of the Wildcat and this led to an entirely new fighter. The Hellcat would prove superior to its main Japanese opponent, the Zero, in most performance categories, especially at high altitude. The lightly armored Zeros were no match for the Hellcat's rugged construction and 650 caliber guns. Another great feature was that it could carry rockets as well as bombs. This became more important as the number of bombers on the carriers was reduced and fighters had to carry out a wider range of missions. The heavily armed Northrop P-61 Black Widow was the United States' first aircraft specifically designed as a night fighter. It carried radar equipment that enabled its crew to locate enemy aircraft in total darkness and fly into proper attack position. P-61 combat operations began just after D-Day when Black Widows flew deep into German airspace, bombing and strafing trains and road traffic. By the end of World War II, Black Widows had seen combat in every theater and had destroyed 127 enemy aircraft and 18 German V-1 buzz bombs. Boeing's B-29 Superfortress was the most sophisticated propeller-driven bomber of World War II and the first bomber to house its crew in pressurized compartments. Although designed to fight in the European theater, the B-29 found its niche on the other side of the globe. In the Pacific, B-29s delivered a variety of aerial weapons, conventional bombs, incendiary bombs, mines, and two nuclear weapons. Late in 1944, AAF leaders selected the Martin assembly line to produce a squadron of B-29s codenamed Silverplate. Martin modified these superfortresses by removing all gun turrets except for the tail position, removing armor plate, installing Curtis electric propellers, and modifying the bomb bay to accommodate either the fat man or little boy versions of the atomic bomb. On August 6, 1945, this Martin-built B-29, an Ola Gay, dropped the first atomic weapon used in combat on Hiroshima, Japan. The Enola Gay's restoration project lasted nearly two decades and took approximately 300,000 work hours to complete. I hope you enjoyed this narrated virtual tour of U.S. World War II aircraft displayed in the National Air and Space Museum. If you would like to tour other aircraft in this series, you will find convenient links in the description section below this video. 
Here are YouTube suggested links on a similar topic that you may enjoy viewing.